For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. From the Hollywood Canteen, The Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope and his guest star, Ben Davis. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob Hollywood Canteen Hope. <laughs> telling you soldiers to use Pepsodent whether your mouth has a lot or a few, and even though your toothbrush may be GI, your teeth will never be PU. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are back in Hollywood, and you should have seen the reception I got at the railroad station. What a crowd. One guy insisted on putting me on his shoulders and carrying me for blocks and blocks. I finally said, gee, you certainly are a fan without equal. And he said, no, I'm a cab driver without tires. And as, and as soon as Skinny Ennis arrived in Hollywood, he went right over to the Red Cross blood bank to make a donation, but a terrible thing happened. On his way over, a mosquito bit him and drained him dry. <laughs> Everything has changed in Hollywood, though. It's all dimmed out down here along the coast, and you can't have any lights shining toward the sky. In fact, in the drugstores, you have to play the pinball machines upside down. <laughs> and they have a midget underneath to tell you what your score is. And they've certainly got an efficient way of moving the troops from one place to another down here. In San Francisco, they use trains. In Seattle, they use flying fortresses. Down here, they just send out a girl in slacks. But... <laughs> but I'm really glad to be back in Hollywood, and here we are doing the first broadcast in the Hollywood canteen. Boy, this is really a marvelous place. Any enlisted man can come in here, be entertained by the top Hollywood talent, and get free food served by Hollywood beauties. One soldier had a big turkey dinner here, then he danced with Dorothy Lamour and spent the rest of the evening sitting on Hedy Lamar's lap. He's been AWOL for four days now. They can't, they can't send him back to camp till he stops steaming. <laughs> and it's so crowded that if a soldier wants to play the radio, he has to squeeze past Lana Turner, Hedy Lamar, and Betty Grable just to put it on. In five minutes, I heard 148 different programs. But can you imagine all those beautiful hostesses and only servicemen are allowed? I know one guy who got dressed up in a uniform so they could get into the canteen, but they knew he was a fake because the uniform fitted him. <laughs> so they threw me out. And the... Uh... <laughs> and the soldiers, sailors, and marines uh, all get along very well together here. I saw a soldier dancing with a blonde and a sailor cut in on him. Then a Marine cut in on the sailor, and it was all done in an orderly military manner. In fact, the bodies were dragged off the floor in a column of three. <laughs> One of the soldiers here danced with a fat girl the other night, and when he wanted to stop dancing, he didn't smile at her and say, should we stop dancing, miss? He just stood at attention and shouted, company, halt! <laughs> and everybody wanted to dance with Marlena Dietrich. A soldier who was a head taller tried to cut in on a sailor, and I won't say the sailor cut him down to his size, but that was the first guy I ever saw who parts his hair at the shoulder blades. <laughs> and I want to tell you, there's certainly a lot of strong soldiers hanging around the canteen here. I walked in with a blonde on one arm and a brunette on the other. Two minutes later, no blonde, no brunette, no arms. <laughs> and Dorothy Lavore came down here to work last night, but she was almost had a disaster. She was standing in the kitchen in a sarong, when a nearsighted soldier reached for a dish towel. <laughs> and now, Wen Nile, step in, Wen. Say, Bob, doesn't it feel great to be back here in Hollywood? Oh, it certainly does, Wen. Say, I'll bet you got a great welcome when you went down to Paramount. Oh, what a welcome. You've seen that big red carpet that they roll out for the stars? Yeah. Did they roll it out for you? Certainly. Then the producer turned to me and said, I'm glad you're back, Hope. Now go get the vacuum. <laughs> Say, when I thought you were coming down to visit me at the studio. Well, I did come, Bob, but I couldn't find your dressing room. Which one is it? Well, you know where the number one dressing room is. Yeah. Well, you know where the number two dressing room is? Yes. Well, right between and Paramount hung a doily over a gopher hole, and it's mine. <laughs> Tell me, did you see Dorothy L'Amour down there? Oh, yeah, Dorothy L'Amour. Dorothy L'Amour. <sighs> now I've got to talk about Pepsodent. <laughs> oh, come, come, when you're getting paid for it. Don't pout. Go. Oh, that's right, uh... I get paid to tell people about Pepsodent, but you, you folks who use it, you're the ones who really collect. 
Pestident gives you the big plus of Irium, that speedy super cleanser that loosens and flushes away filmy coating you can feel with your tongue. You see, you can have a bright smile and never know it. it may be hidden under a dull coating that stains and makes your teeth look dingy. But once that film is whisked away, there's your natural smile. Your bright smile, ready to shine. I'll remember that. I'll keep my mouth shut during blackout. <laughs> uh, why stop there, Bob? Uh, go, you Irium slave. Go. <laughs> but, but seriously, give Pepsi a chance to show you how bright your smile can be. Give that cool, refreshing flavor of Pepsi a chance to wake up your taste and let you know your teeth are clean, bright. And you'll know that they are just by the feel of them. So, tell you what to do. You know that empty metal tube you've been saving? Take it to your store tonight. Doesn't matter what kind of an old tube you take to the store. The important thing is to bring back a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste. And here's Francis Langford, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is. At last, my love has come along. My lonely days are over And life is like a song At last The skies above are blue My heart was wrapped in clover The night I looked at you I found a dream that I can speak to, a dream that I can call my own. I found a thrill to press my cheek to, a thrill I've never known. You smiled, and then the spell was cast, and here we are in heaven. I found a dream that I can speak to, a dream that I can call my own. I found a dream. A thrill I've never known You smiled And then the spell was cast And here we are in heaven For you are mine At last singing at last. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present one of the foremost actresses of our time and the president of the Hollywood Canteen, Miss Betty Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. That was the most flattering introduction. Are you sure I deserve it? Well, you certainly do, Betty. You're all the things I said about you and more. Really, it's a pleasure to meet someone in my own class. <laughs> I, uh, but seriously, Betty, it's a thrill for me and those associated with me on the Pepsi program to be here at the Hollywood Canteen tonight and to give what assistance we can to the wonderful work that's being done here. Bob, we're certainly grateful to you for broadcasting from here. Say, I guess this is the first radio show to be broadcast in the Hollywood Canteen, eh, Betty? That's right, Bob, you are. Later on, there'll be others, but we thought we'd start in a small way. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm a big name. Yes, and I know what it is, but let's be friendly. <laughs> but, Betty, this is really a wonderful place here for the soldiers. We're so, glad. We're so glad you think so. 
Bob, there's a little matter I want to take up with you. You know all the food and the entertainment at the canteen is free. Of course, I know that. Mm. Then why were you standing on the street yelling to the soldiers, Hey, come on in, fellas, it's my treat. <laughs> well, I left the tips for all of them. <laughs> and Pepsi and Caps are hard to get now. But tell me, <laughs> tell me, Betty, how did this Hollywood canteen get started? Well, actually, Bob, local number 47 of the Musicians' Union had an idea to have a canteen fashioned after the American Theater Wing stage door canteen in New York. They invited all the other guilds and unions of the entertainment industry in Hollywood to join forces. They did, and we formed this organization called the Hollywood Canteen. Oh, it's swell. Now, I bet the enlisted men have a lot of fun here, Betty. They seem to, Bob. One soldier who spent the evening here last week came up to me when it was all over and said he'd had such a good time, he wished he could take this whole place back to camp with him. Gee, that was certainly nice of him. Yes, the uh, MPs caught him half a block from here with nine pieces of silverware and Lana Turner. <laughs> By the way, Bob, I understand you've been doing some wonderful work selling bonds. That's right, Betty. I've been offering to kiss every movie star who bought a $500 bond. That's wonderful. How many have you sold? One, and Boris Karloff wants his money back. (laughs) (laughs) Say, tell me. (laughs) That you, Boris? Tell me, I... (laughs) How long has this canteen been open, Betty? It's been open ten days, and the wonderful thing about this building, Bob, is that the members of the different guilds and unions remodeled it themselves, and it didn't cost the canteen a nickel. Really? Well, who waxed the floors? Fever McGee? Ah, yes. How'd you, how'd you know? I can see Molly's footprints where she stood over him with a broom. <laughs> Everyone contributes. Yesterday, Bing Crosby brought some steaks over. Yeah, I know. I saw them lose at Bay Meadows. <laughs> Tell me, does my old girlfriend, Hetty Lamar, show up here much? Oh, yes, Bob, but I always thought your girlfriend was Madeline Carroll. Oh, yes, she's one of the mob, but, uh, you know... <laughs> you know, in my last picture, I had about 25 love scenes with Madeline. Yes, she told me. I know you'll be glad to hear she's feeling better now. <laughs> oh, you must have your little joke. What else can I get on this program? <laughs> Step out from behind the net and you'll find out. But say, uh, how about going out with me tonight after the broadcast's over, Betty? Well, I'm afraid I'm too busy, Bob. You know, these are busy days for all girls. Yeah, you know, women are doing a million things nowadays. They're riveting, welding, taking care of gas stations. See, who knows, maybe someday one of them will learn how to cook. Every day, every day, Bob, women are proving they can do anything men can do. There are even women driving taxis. Yeah, I had a lot of trouble with one of those women taxi drivers last night. What was the matter? She wanted me to sit in the back. (laughs) You know, even gas stations are putting on girl attendants now. Yes, I'll bet they're very efficient, too, Bob. Say, Betty, I have an idea. Let's do a little sketch for the folks. You be the girl attendant at the gas station, and I'll drive into my car. All right, Bob, let's go. My merry Oldsmobile With no tires on each wheel Gee, I'm running out of gas Gosh, am I lucky there's a gas station over there Oh boy, I made it There's nobody here Service! Hey, a little service, please Watch your hurry, Beagle Nose (laughs) Come on, come on, fill her up Hey, gee, you're a girl, huh? Well, shall I check your water? No, it's all right, even if I do drool a lot. (laughs) Uh, by the way, kid, what do you think of this wagon I'm driving? It's got a hopped-up motor and a driver to match. Uh, (laughs) Come on, tell me, what's the trouble? Well, one of my brake brake rods is busted. I burn out my bearings and my crankcase is in terrible shape. Oh, you poor boy, how do you manage to walk? This uh, left rear tire is kind of worn. Want me to examine it? Okay. Hmm, I must remember to get my nails shortened. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I can always pick up another tire. I've got a Tommy gun. <laughs> just a minute. Just a minute. I'll spray your windshield. What makes you think I got a windshield and get me a towel? You did 
didn't drive very much last night, did you? How can you tell? Gas in the tank? No, compact on the seat. <laughs> well, how much gas do you want me to put in that flamethrower? Well, give me about uh, five gallons. Okay. I'm sorry, it only takes three gallons. Three gallons? Are you sure? Of course. Just look, it's so full I can't get the radiator cap back on. <laughs> oh, brother, you're really fixing me up fine. Say, what happened to the guy that used to work here? You mean that guy with flat feet, fallen arches, asthma, rheumatism, and lumbago? Yeah? They drafted him as a commando. <laughs> Hey, uh, say, I just noticed. Where'd you get that china? Oh, I went driving with a girl who works at Douglas. Swing shift? Yeah, she swung before I could shift. <laughs> Thanks, Wolf. Say, uh, how about you going out with me tonight? Okay. I don't mind going out with a swell dresser like you. You sure know how to do a zoot suit, Justice. That's a swell zoot suit. Yeah, get a load of this jacket. It comes all the way down to my ankles. What's the good of that? I'm the only jitterbug in town who can go out dancing while he's having his pants pressed at the same time. <laughs> well, I gotta leave now. I'll say, uh, how about a little kiss before I go? That's not part of the service. Besides, I don't kiss strange men. Wait a minute. I'm not strange. I'd hate to put it to a vote. <laughs> oh. Oh, come on. Just to show there's no hard feelings. Well, all right. I'll give you a real kit. There. There. How was it? They're certainly freezing a lot of things these days. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Freddie Davis. And I wish you all luck in the world. You and the Hollywood canteen. Keep up the grand job you're doing. And now, Skinny Anna singing... Kalamazoo! A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I've got a gal in Kalamazoo. Don't want to boast, but I know she's the toast of Kalamazoo. Zoo. Years have gone by, my. My, how she grew I like to look when I carry the books in Kalamazoo I'm gonna send a wire hopping on a flyer leaving today Am I dreaming? I can hear a screaming How are you, Mr. Jackson? Everything okay L-A-M-A-A-Z-O What a gal I'm real I'll make my bid for that freckle-faced kid I'm hurrying to. I'm going to Michigan to see the sweetest gal in Kalamazoo. Everything is okay, L-A-M-A-C-O-O. -O. What a gal, a real pepperoon. I'll make my bid for the freckle face kid I'm hugging to. I'm going to Michigan to see the sweetest gal in Kalamazoo. And now I have a message for all of our listeners. How many of you know... Oh, my gosh. Hey, what's the matter, Wynn? Hey, Skinny, something's wrong. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Skinny Ennis and his band will now play Jingle hey, Jangle. Take, take it easy, Wynn. Slow down there. Tell me what's wrong. Say, Skinny, uh, what's a tube of pepsodent? Oh, you know, Wynn, that's the thing that's built like me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but uh, it's a tooth toothpaste, isn't it? Here's a script that was handed to me, and it talks about a, a toothbrush. Well, shucks, Wynn. Didn't you ever hear about Pepsi and toothbrush? Didn't you know we sell toothbrushes, too? Gosh, no. Gee, that Pepsi and company doesn't miss a bet, does it? 
I mean, not when it comes to making teeth brighter and better looking. Gosh, I didn't know about the Pepsodent and toothbrush. But here it says the 50 Tough Toothbrush is now a better toothbrush. Better because it has improved Fibrex, DuPont's newest and finest synthetic bristles. These new bristles are sturdier, heavier than before, and that means they'll last longer. But strong as they are, they're still gentle, kind to tender gums, and they feel good to your mouth the first time you use them. And did you know this new Pepsodent 50 Tough Toothbrush carries the Good Housekeeping magazine seal of approval? Well, it does, and that means you can buy it with complete confidence. So tonight, folks, go out and get a new Pepsodent 50 Tough Toothbrush. Hmm. Gee, isn't it funny I didn't know about that toothbrush? I thought we were only selling toothpaste and tooth powder. <laughs> Once again, we want you to meet the Navy. Representing the servicemen here tonight at the Hollywood Canteen is... Yeoman Wilbur Johnson reporting, sir. There you are. That's fine. How are you, Wilbur? Say, you just said you were a yeoman. What does that mean, a yeoman? Oh, it's about the same as a private in the Army, only their pants, they can bend over. Your pants do hug you, don't they, huh? Hug me, Bob. When I bend over, the stitches in the seams start singing my devotion. <laughs> it sure ain't like those civilian clothes I used to wear back in Arkansas. Uh, yeah, you Arkansas, really? Well, say, now that you're out here, what do you think of the girls in California? Oh, I don't pay attention to them. I'm married. I got a wife in Little Rock. Really? Well, this is the first time I've ever seen a sailor with a ship in the Pacific and an anchor in Arkansas. <laughs> well, uh, how long have you been married, Wilbur? I got married a year ago. I suppose it was a whirlwind courtship. No, Bob. I went with my wife 12 years before I married her. 12 years? Say, what department are you in in the Navy? Reconnaissance? <laughs> no, nope, intelligence. <It's... laughs> Just wait for my last before you throw your slingshot in there, old boy. Do you <laughs> say... <laughs> Don't say what last or I'll fall over. Say, Wilbur, I hear you're a pretty good golfer. Well, I certainly like the game, Bob. I understand you play a lot with Bing Crosby. Not anymore. Boy, would you play with a guy who waits till nobody's looking and then picks his ball up and throws it toward the hole? Of course not. Neither will Crosby. <laughs> That's you. Cut in. Right there. You know, Bob, being at the Hollywood canteen like this, I wanted to meet a movie star. A movie star? Well, you're lucky you ran into me. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Know any? <laughs> Do I know any? Listen, just sit down here at this table and you'll be surprised who you'll meet. Oh, yeah, Mr. Holt! Oh, oh, hello, hello, sailor boy. I understand you wanted to meet some of the other people on the show, and here I am. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Colonna. <laughs> well, the idea of saying I look like Mr. Colonna, I won't stand for it. And neither will I! <laughs> You don't understand. I'm Vera Bang. Pleased to meet you. What outfit you with? <laughs> Mr. Hope, what's the name of this handsome hunk? <laughs> Why, Miss Vegas, this is Will Johnson, yeoman, third class. Oh, listen, brother, he's a man. As far as I'm concerned, that makes him first class. <laughs> <laughs> Sailor, I think I could go for you. You oh, could? Yes, I like tall, dark men. I'm blonde. Oh, then who cares? Kiss me. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't. They're old enough to be my mother. <laughs> uh, you know, Mr. Hope, I'd poke you right in the mouth if you weren't old enough to be my father. <laughs> well, tell me, Miss Ray, how are you getting along with the servicemen here at the canteen? Oh, they're wild about me. Simply wild about me. Imagine, I just stole a soldier right from under Hedy Lamar's nose. <laughs> That's impossible. Oh, is that so? That Hedy Lamar, I'm just as pretty and young and attractive as she is. I noticed right after I laid her out with a baseball bat. <laughs> Gee, I'd like to meet that Harry Lamar. Well, you know, Wilbur, all the big movie stars wait on the tables here at the canteen. I wonder who we'll get. Boy, last night, Lana Turner waited on me. She came over to the table and kissed me. The night before that, Carol Landis waited on me and kissed me. Well, here goes. Waiter! Mustache tickles, doesn't it? <laughs> So you're the waiter. Do we have to pay for our meal, Colonna? No, we serve all soldiers free. What about me? Veterans of the last war serve free, too. <laughs> oh, you dear man. 
Yeah, now I'd like to get into your mustache with an egg beater. <laughs> now, look, waiter, what's wrong with this chicken soup? There's more water in it than chicken. Ah, yes. Hen was crying. Chicks got drafted. <laughs> Furthermore, Kelowna, I have another complaint to make. This steak is as tough as shoe leather. Now, well, that's ridiculous, Halt. That steak is not as tough as shoe leather. It's soft and tender and... Well, maybe it is as tough as shoe leather. Kelowna, how come you suddenly changed your mind and agreed with me? Well, I just looked down and I'm barefoot. Now, uh, what do you have? Oh, uh, Professor, I don't know what to order. What would you suggest to keep my figure trim? Meat cleaver. <laughs> well, I'll go back in the kitchen and get your order. All right, and hurry it up, Cologne. Oh, look, Wilbur, here comes Skinny Ennis. Hiya, Skin. Hello, Bob. Skinny, I want you to meet Wilbur Johnson, yeoman, third class. Wilbur, this is Skinny Ennis, human, fourth class. <laughs> Hiya, Hiya, Muscles. muscles. <laughs> Boy, you should see these two guys standing side by side, folks. They look like a couple of strands of spaghetti in search of a meatball. <laughs> well, shake hands, Bob. We found one. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what's keeping Kelowna with our food. Hey, Kelowna! Be with you in a second, Hope. Having a tough time putting these panties on the lamp chops. How come? Won't fit over the girdles. Kelowna, you'll drive me to distraction. Okay, but no faster than 35 miles an hour. <laughs> well, Kelowna, can you just bring me a glass of milk? Milk? Easiest thing in the world. I have a cow out here, and I'll milk it. Only it's cold out here, so I'll put on my woolen mittens. Kelowna, don't milk her with those fuzzy woolen mittens. Why not? She doesn't mind. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Care for a milkshake? <laughs> Say, guess we may as well forget about Kelowna for a while. Oh, here comes Francis Langford. Hello, Francis. Hello, everybody. Hello, sailor. Hello. Gee, you're beautiful, Miss Langford. Your eyes are like those of Hero, for whom Leander swam the hell's pond. Your smile is a smile of Cleopatra that made Mark Antony her slave. <laughs> well, what do you know? An intellectual wolf. <laughs> Well, look, now that we're all here at the table, Skinny, Wilbur, Vera, Francis, and me, let's have some fun. Gee, Skinny doesn't look as though he's having a good time, Bob. Oh, Skinny never has a good time at these dinners, Francis. Why not? Well, the pimentos and the olives keep looking at him and saying, he's out there, why are we in here? <laughs> oh, the music's starting. Good, let's dance. Who wants to dance this dance with me? I do. Who wants to dance this dance with me? I do. Who wants to dance this dance with me? I do. And don't think she can't do it either. <laughs> Say, you know, I don't think Cologne will ever get... I'll get it. Hello? This is Long Distance, Denver, Colorado, calling Bob Hope. Oh, this is Bob Hope speaking. I'll put your party on. Go ahead, please. Hello, Hope. Yes, Kelowna. Which one of you ordered that Denver sandwich? <laughs> Why, Kelowna, you wouldn't be so stupid as to go to Denver for a Denver sandwich. Why, of course not. That would be silly. Well, where are you? In Bermuda, getting the onions. <laughs> All thanks for the memory, Miss Betty Davis, queen of Hollywood's canteen. Each soldier saying flying man and leatherneck marine. To thank you so much. And thanks for the memory, you folks who never shirk to make this project work. For every dime and might of time you've lent to make it perk. We thank you so much. Well, we've all had a great time tonight broadcasting here from the Hollywood Canteen. And really, it's great seeing these boys of the service enjoying a little of the fun they deserve. Next week, we'll be back at the same time broadcasting for the boys down at Camp Elliott in San Diego. Good night, everybody, and greetings to the boys at the Harbinger Aerial Gunner School down there in the lower Rio Grande Valley. Listening tonight over KRGV. Good night, everybody. <laughs> came to you from the Hollywood Canteen in Hollywood, California. This is Wendell Niles speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>